Hi everyone. How's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. As usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. According to an article titled Giant's Bones in Mound, in the New York Times of July 14, 1916, archaeologists dug up the remains of horned giants in the Susquehanna Valley of Pennsylvania. Among the photos circulating at the time was this horned skull. According to the article, a Professor A. B. Skinner of the American Indian Museum and Reverend George Donahue, Pennsylvania State Historian, and Professor W. K. Moorhead of the Phillips Andover Academy, discovered the burial mound with the remains of 68 people. They had the average height of 7 to 8 feet, or 2.4 meters. On July 30, only a few weeks later, Skinner wrote a retraction of the whole thing, again in the New York Times. As so often with cover-ups, several versions of the story began circulating. According to one, the whole thing was a prank. According to another, a disgruntled cook at the camp made the story up. Regardless of the story, they were telling the public that there are no skulls with horns, nor people with horns nor anything like that. Fact-checkers today continue to insist that no such thing exists or was ever dug up. If there are ever any giants found anywhere it's because of a disease called gigantism they tell you. The truth is, there are plenty of medieval drawings, paintings, and tales, of giants and smaller humans with horns. Consider these paintings. This portrait painting is Margareta van Eyck, by Flemish painter, Jean van Eyck, 1439. Is it possible that this fashion of the Middle Ages was meant to conceal real horns? or that these are actual horns rather than a fashion. Are these our infamous reptilians disguised as humans? There are still people today that grow horns, but it's so rare that it's labeled cutaneous horn and seen as some kind of disease or tumor. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. This whole ancient thing around dragons and serpents may also be much more recent than I thought. In fact, there is some link between serpents and giants. According to the Book of Enoch, the fallen angels landed on Mount Hermon. There they made a pact to have sex with humans. The offspring of the interactions created the giants. On the one hand, we have these Mesopotamian and Sumerian images of reptilian beings. On the other hand, we have countless medieval drawings and paintings of reptilian beings, interacting with or warring with humans, such as this one. Notice the horns. This is an image dated 875, from the British Library in London. It is apparently taken from a French legal codex. Dragons mentioned in law books. Not bad for a creature that allegedly didn't exist. This image is a 1526 painting by Peter Bruegel, a Dutch painter. At first sight, there is nothing unusual about the painting. With a magnifying glass, you see the painter has tucked in some other stuff that has bypassed the sensors of history. Here's that close-up. People are riding on three animals that look like dinosaurs. An even closer look. If this were the only example of dragon-like creatures existing alongside humans, we could easily dismiss it. But there are plenty more. We find these because the fakers of history aren't very thorough when it comes to scrubbing evidence. These creatures are not portrayed as the main feature, but as a casual side to the main feature of armed soldiers. There is a chapter in the biblical book of Daniel called Bell and the Dragon. It is not very well known because it's been removed from many modern Bibles. When parts of an ancient book are removed to appease modern preferences, it's mostly because it reveals some aspect of hidden history. 
The story is about people worshipping both Belle, which is an idol, her statue, and a dragon. The book says that, contrary to Belle, the dragon is a real creature. The story compares the unreal, Belle, with the real, dragon. The dragon is the real problem. Belle is the illusion that the dragon puts in front of people, to divert from itself. The hero of the story, Daniel, gets rid of Belle by demonstrating that it is not Belle but humans who are receiving sacrificial offerings, and he gets rid of the dragon by slaying it. I can see why this story is absent in many modern Bibles. It's a stark reminder of the theme of humans slaying dragons, a story found across all cultures and in many different folk legends around the world. It's a reminder that, not so long ago, these things were taken for granted as being real. I have always skipped the Middle Ages in my research. I had been taught that they were the Dark Ages and that nothing of interest happened in them. My school indoctrinated mind thought of these times as royals versus peasants, the plague, Templars, the Inquisition going after witches, pirates and sailors discovering new land, etc. There didn't seem to be much data on what happened between the year 800 and 1500. Once I let go of my preconceptions and beliefs about these times, a whole new world opened up. I learned that this time period was so much stranger than we were led to believe. Knowledge dissemination relies on you. Share this article far and wide. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.